There are strongholds of immorality. There are strongholds of sin. There are strongholds of unrighteousness. There are strongholds of deception and false doctrine. And he has called us to pull them down. They will pull them down in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high sin that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is the doctrine of the Bible. We know the doctrines of the Bible, what the Lord has taught us from cover to cover in the Bible and any sin any imagination, any ideology, any kind of a philosophy, any superstition that is fighting against that doctrine of the word of God in our preaching we pull them down in our prayer, we pull them down. In our church administration, church organization, we pull them down. That is what the Lord has given us to do. We're very watchful, we're very vigilant, and we're looking at everything. Is, is there anything there? Is there any tradition there? Is there any kind of a worldly a system trying to come in there that will drag down, that will be contradicting the, the knowledge of God in our midst? We bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, you will do it. I will do it. We will unite together to do it in Jesus' name. We're coming back. We're coming back now to uh, Judges chapter 6. You see, it was a clear thing the Lord called the Gideon to do. Judges chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 26. In verse 26, it says, And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of the rock. Here the Lord was still talking to, was still talking to Gideon. He said, This is what to do. Number one, you save Israel from the Midianites. Number two, you also destroy, you smite the Midianites as one man. Number three, you throw down, you cut down all the groves and all those idolatrous things. Number four, you build unto the Lord. Build unto the Lord. Build unto the Lord. And that's what the Lord is telling us to do. You know, Jesus himself said, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church that Christ is building in Jesus' name. And thank God you are part of that church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. As a single brother, single sister, married brother, married sister, as a youth, you're a member of the body of Christ, and you're part of the church. Christ is building the gates of hell, no matter what direction they are coming from, they will not overcome you in Jesus' name. We're to build your life and build that life on the basis of the word of God. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 32. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 32. As we build what the Lord has given us to build, it says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. That's why preaching is so central in the ministry of the church. Preaching is so central, even in the house fellowship, and preaching is so central in our revival third week of the month uh, program. Anything we're doing, preaching is uh, very central. Why? Because it's through the preaching of the world. We build up the believers. We build up the young. We build, even in the children church, we build them up on the basis of the word of God. It will build you up and give you an inheritance Inheritance among all them that are sanctified will be saved and sanctified in Jesus' name. It tells us in First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three, we're builders. You'll be a builder. And what you build will not collapse. In First Corinthians chapter three, First Corinthians chapter three, and I'm reading here from verse nine. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Ye are God's building. You see, it's giving us a clear assignment of what we're to do. And it says that we are to build in verse ten according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and not another buildeth thereon. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. We're building, whether you you know, you are in this area of work, you're building together with us, or in this other area, we're building together. There's no contradiction, there's no competition. Our pastors are men, they're preaching. Our wives, our, our women leaders, they're also supporting and they're building. And then our choir, they're singing, our usher, secret, everybody, we're, we're doing it together. And our youth section, children, 
children's section we're all building together you'll not say well this is not important everything we do is important because everything is part of the building the apostle door as a master builder he has laid the foundation and the rest of us were building upon that foundation for all the foundation in verse 11 can no man lay than that is laid who is it Jesus Christ now if any man build upon this foundation gold uh, silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare each because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try shall test every man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abide your work will abide which he has built thereupon he shall receive a reward your work will be rewardable in jesus name then in verse 15 if any man's work shall be burnt those who be wood hay stubble they are working to you they are striving to you they are struggling to you they are helping to you be a part of the work to you only that the materials they are using those materials they are not poisonous they are not negative but they are worthless there's no value in them they're using wood or hay or stubble and then it says it shall be burnt that is the work shall be burnt if any man's work shall be burnt it shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved so as by fire. That means that if he still lives a righteous life, is saved, is a real child of God. Only that the work was worthless. The work did not contribute anything to the progress of the church and to the salvation of souls. He says, well, he will be saved on the basis of his personal life. But the work he has done, everything will be lost for all eternity. I pray that will not be your Lord. In verse 16, know ye not? that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you if any man defile the temple of God him shall God destroy these are people now they say they are building with us but they're like the Jezebel in the church in Tatira they're negative they make people to commit sin they lead people into sin they're like a Balaam and the people teaching the doctrines and the and the deeds of the collators and they do something negative and make people to go back into sin to idolatry it says if any man like Balaam anyone like Jezebel defiled the temple of God him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy which temple ye are I pray that our work will be positive and not negative in Jesus name we're coming back to Judges chapter 6 Judges chapter 6 and we're looking at uh, we're looking at verse Verse 26. As we look at what uh, this Gideon was to do, number one, you see there was destruction. Destruction. There was something he was to destroy. And then you look at your own work to you. Destruction. You come to a local church and see the tradition there. You see the superstition there. You see some idolatrous practices coming in. Like when they want to do naming ceremony, they want to do wedding, they want to do reception, or they want to do some other things. And then you see that among the young people, they are saying, covenant covenant and we see which covenant is this they're introducing the idolatrous things and then there is destruction number two there is construction construction after putting down this and casting down this then there's a building up which is construction and then there's obstruction obstruction is uh, you know when he dis when he destroyed all those idolatrous things then the people of the city came and they said no who has done this one how can this be done bring the man out when they realized it was a Gideon we're going to kill him it was obstruction against the work the Lord had given him to do and then the father said who is going to defend Baal if any man is going to defend Baal then let him die the dead if Baal is God let him defend himself and then he passed over that obstruction now he had instruction instruction and the Lord now began to give him instruction as to what he will do the Spirit of God came upon him and then he had this instruction you'll find those four elements and the calling that God has given us number one destruction you look at your life you look at your family and say this will not go that will not go there must be that destruction then number two there will be the construction you begin to build up you build yourself in the faith you build on the word of God you build yourself in the love of God you build the church as well then there's obstruction persecution might come this hey how did you do that why should you do that they want to obstruct your way they want to hinder you from getting to where you will go you will get there in Jesus 
Jesus name and then instruction comes in your life the Lord begins to say this what to do and that's what to do and that's what to do and then as you follow the instructions of the Lord you are going to overcome in Jesus name now the next thing the Lord told Gideon he was to offer a sacrifice look at this in chapter 6 of verse 26 Judges chapter 6 verse 26 and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock and in the ordered place and take the second bullock and offer a bond sacrifice of the wood of the grove which thou hast caught and offer a sacrifice isn't that what the Lord has told us as well that we need to offer a sacrifice what kind of sacrifice is that we're looking at a Romans chapter 12 Romans chapter 12 these things are written for our learning for admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come as we read all these things in the old covenant in the old testament there is something for you that you think how does that apply to the christian how does that apply to a new testament disciple if god told them to do this what is the similar thing he has called me to do in romans chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. Now you are not offering a bullock now of seven years old. You are presenting your very body. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Let all the superstitions go. Let all the traditions go. Let all those idolatrous practices go. And be not conformed unto this world but be thou renewed, be renewed and be transformed by the renewing of your mind that he may prove what is that good and acceptable perfect will of God will present all that unto the Lord. Our assignment is very clear. Our assignment is very definite, it's very specific. As children of God go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, you'll make a success of the ministry in Jesus' name. Now, point number two is a complete assurance, developing, growing faith. Complete assurance, developing, growing faith. The Lord was calling Gideon. And the Gideon had no excuse actually because we have been told in the word of God in the little day and of the Bible revealed at that time that they were to take the old testament that they had. That's the Genesis to Deuteronomy already. That was written at that time because Moses wrote them and Moses left there with the children of Israel. Anybody got called to lead the people should take that and read through that and then follow after. That's what Joshua did. Look at the leadership of Joshua. See how Joshua uh, led the children of Israel at his own time. And he provided a good and perfect example for them. We're looking at uh, Joshua chapter 11. Joshua chapter 11 verse 15. It tells us, as the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. That was the victory of Joshua. That was the wisdom of Joshua. That was the triumph of Joshua because he did everything as the Lord had commanded and what Gideon should have done is also check up that word and do everything according to the word of the Lord well Gideon is gone but you are there what you should do is take the word of God and then do as the Lord has commanded you'll do like that in Jesus name we're coming to we're coming to Deuteronomy chapter 17 Deuteronomy chapter 17 and I'm reading from verse 14 Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 14 when thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee and shall possess it and shall dwell therein and shall say I will set a king over me like all the nations which are about me. The Lord knew that they will need leadership. At this time now there was no king in Israel and everyone did that which was right in his own eyes. They shouldn't have done that. They should just go back to the word of God that when you get to the land and you possess that land and you dwell in that land here is what you do. Verse 15 thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee whom the Lord thy God shall choose. God chose Gideon and he chose him to rule over the people and to deliver the people. Then he says one from among thy brethren and that was a Gideon. He was a one among them and shall thou say to be king, to be leader, to be ruler over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee which is not of thy brethren. It's very clear. You're not said.
let a stranger over you. There's a local church there, and then you are the pastor there. Well, you are chosen as the pastor there because you are not a stranger. You are not a stranger to salvation. You're not a stranger to this church. You're not a stranger to the doctrines and the teaching of the word of God in the church. If you are not around, maybe you want to go somewhere and then you want to put somebody there. There are other people there in the church, among the leaders, among the workers in that local church who are not strangers. Those are the people you put there. But you know some people who don't know the word of God and they say, well, these people, I don't want them to take my place after I'm gone. Therefore, they bring a stranger somewhere and put it on them that a stranger is not the right person you see the word of god in verse 16 it says but he shall not multiply horses to himself nor cause the people to return to egypt that's what the leader will do this is what gideon should have read and to the end that he shall multiply horses for as much as the lord has said unto you he shall henceforth return no more that way neither shall he multiply wives to himself oh why didn't he they all read this that he wanted them those kings and those leaders and those rulers who have just one wife is not multiply wives to himself that his sad turn not away neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold and it shall be when he seated upon the throne of his kingdom he shall write him a copy of this law in the book out of that which is before the priests and the levites the levites was still there, the ark of the covenant was still there, the word of God was still there he will write everything out and it shall be, in verse 19 with him, and it shall read therein all the days of his life if the book of Judges had done this everybody will not be doing just what is right in their own eyes, they'll keep to that word of God, and then it says that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and to keep all in the words of this law and these statutes and to do them that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom he and his children in the midst of Israel well if those people failed we will not fail I said, we will not fail. We don't even have to go to the kind of ordeal of copying out the Bible today because there's printing press. And, uh, you know, Bible society, they are printed all these Bibles. And every one of us, now you can get a copy of the Bible. And then instead of, you know, spending the time to write it out, and the Bible is now available, the audio is available, the written script is available. It's on the iPad, it's on the phone, it's everywhere. It's on the laptop, it's on the computer. It's also in the Bible we hold in our hand. We don't have any excuse today. We can read it every day. We'll read it in Jesus' name. And then we go by the word that the Lord himself has taught us. Let's see that uh, Gideon did not have any excuse because God gave him complete assurance that should develop growing faith. Well, number one, assurance, the word of promise. The word of promise. We're looking at Judges chapter 6 and verse 12 Financial again. Sickness. Judges chapter 6, we're Physical looking at sickness. verse 12 again. Look Academy at the word of sickness. promise. And the angel of the oh, Lord appeared unto sickness. him and said unto him, Run The Lord away. is In with the thee, thou mighty man of valor. The Lord and is with thee. Isn't that what the Lord has told us that the Lord Let is with Lord us and we testimony. are the mighty people of today. You, you are the mighty of man of valor, mighty woman of valor in, in Jesus' name. name Look pray. at verse 16 here. In verse 16 it says, Amen. the Lord Amen. said unto him, surely I will be Thank with you, thee and thou seat. shalt smite the Midianites as one man. That's the word of promise and that's enough to give him the faith that he needed. And you know, there are some people that are running after revelation, running after vision, running after this and that the word is not sufficient for them. And they think, you know, some people, they say, I heard of a particular tape. I heard of a particular CD. In that CD, somebody said she went to heaven and when that person got to heaven and saw, you know, the people in heaven, the way they dress, they dress like deeper life. And then those uh, people, they told me over there, go and tell them back in the world that, you know, if you 
you dress like deeper life, even if you are not sanctified, if you dress like deeper life, even though you are married to the second husband, if you dress like deeper life, just dressing, dressing, dress like that, then you will go to heaven. And then some people are, have you heard, have you heard, have you seen? They say that if you dress like deeper life, finish. Whether you are still stealing or not, just dress like that, that's finished. And whether you have done restitution or not, you are stealing uh, money from your place of work, God doesn't look at that, only dress like deeper life. And then some people said, look at this one, they, you know, they recommend deeper life from heaven. Uh -uh. You follow the word of God. I said we follow the word of God. And then some people that have not even, you know, following the word of God, who have been teaching the Bible and teaching the Bible, they're adamant, they're resistant, they're rebellious. They say, me, never. And then somebody said, go and listen to this. And because somebody now said that she died and all that, and this is, ah, I didn't know. Now I'm going to do this. And then they say, look at me now. I'm dressing like deeper life. I'm going to heaven. Have you repented? Have you given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? How about the anger in the heart? Dressing? Dressing is not enough. How about all the stealing? How about all the jealousy? How about all the envy? All that is not enough. If you have that thing, you'll throw it away in Jesus' name. You know, all these lies that people come to, these are the last days. These are the last days. You remember that Jesus himself told the story of Lazarus and the rich man. The rich man died and went to hell. And then in hell, he took the signs and this, I mean, tormenting this, a flame of fire. And then Lazarus also died. He was carried by angels into the bosom of Abraham. And then the rich man said, send Lazarus that he will come over and dip his hand in water and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in this flame and Abraham said no that's not possible there's a great gulf between us and, and Lazarus cannot come over you'll be there forever and ever all right Abraham do one favor unto me that will send Lazarus where to my brethren and when you send them let Lazarus tell them that he saw me here let us all tell them he saw this one he saw this one and Abraham said it's not possible once you are over there you are over there they have tell me Moses and the prophets the word of God let them hear them if they don't hear them it says that they will also come into this place when Lazarus died, I mean the Lazarus of John chapter 11, he spent four days in the great beyond and when he came back he didn't take over from the words of Jesus Jesus was still preaching to the people and the people were following the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ they didn't follow, you know Lazarus died and Lazarus is telling us he saw this person there, that person went to hell, he saw that church uh, that church, they're not preaching right in, they went to hell and then Lazarus said he saw deeper life there, if you want to go to heaven everybody now come let's go to heaven through a deeper life Lazarus did not say that he did not mention a word of what he said when he went to the great beyond it's only the word of God Jesus said if you continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed it's not continuing watching all those people are saying and then we know about Paul the apostles where right? they went to the third heaven and he was in paradise and he saw things and had things that cannot be uttered he didn't come to tell us that. All he told us is the word of Jesus, the word of the Lord, the gospel. It is the gospel that takes us to heaven. It is the word of God that takes us to heaven. It's not one CD there, one CD there, one CD there. That's deception. Look at, you know, the damsel that was following Paul and Silas. These are the great men of God that show unto us the way of salvation. And uh, Paul did not say, oh, come on, let's record that in the CD. And then we distribute that so that the people will know we are the men of God. That lady is giving us recommendation. That lady is saying that we are the great people of God and we're showing the word of salvation Paul the apostle said that evil spirit come out in Jesus name it came out and all these evil spirits that are traveling here and there they died they saw this and that how do you know that they actually died how do you know that they are not making up those stories have you seen them do you know their lives and the men they are following that they are following about what do you know they're doing among themselves be very careful the word of God is sufficient for us I said the Bible is sufficient for us we don't need recommendation of anybody to come and tell us I saw mommy so and so in heaven and Jesus said go and tell them let them dress as mommy so and so you will not follow the devil 
you will not follow evil spirits. You'll follow the word of God in Jesus' name. We're looking at 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm reading to you here from verse, from verse 16. 2 Peter chapter 1. And we're looking at here from verse 16. It says, For we have not followed kindly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the cunning of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, that is, uh, Peter. James and John, they went to the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw Jesus Christ transfigured, and they saw Moses, and they saw Elijah. It says, for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice unto him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. But it says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day a star arise in your hearts. And this is Peter saying, we well, were there on the Mount of Transfiguration. But he says, that's not what we are going to major on. We have a more sure word of prophecy. And this word, the Bible, God has given us, we're going to keep on proclaiming it in Jesus' name. The word of promise. That's how faith comes. That's how faith comes. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, we're looking at verse 17. Romans chapter 10, we're looking at verse 17. And it says in verse 17, it says, A faith coming by hearing, hearing by the vision. Hearing by the revelation of somebody who died and came back. What does it say? Hear it by the word of God. That word is in your hand. I said it's in your hand. What is the word of God in your hand? That's it. That's it. Trace it up. That's it. Trace it up. That's enough. Look at all this. You have this and you are running after another. You are wasting your money. You are wasting God's money. Listen to this. Read this one. Read this one. This is the most sure word of prophecy. It will be fulfilled every letter and every jot, every title in Jesus' name. Now, number two is the accepted sacrifice. Accepted sacrifice. Don't you see what Gideon did? Well, coming back to, we're coming back to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. I'm reading here from verse 17. Judges chapter 6. We're reading from verse 17. Gideon should have known that already God accepted the sacrifice. In chapter 6, verse 17, it says, And he said unto him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring a force in my presence, and set it before thee. And, and he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and a living case of an effort of flour and the flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it and the angel of God said unto him take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and, and lay them upon the rock and pour out the broth and he did so and the angel of the Lord put forth the edge of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes and there rose of fire out of the rock. This supernatural fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the living cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. That should build his faith because he made the sacrifice and the sacrifice was accepted by the evidence of fire coming out of that rock. That's the fire coming out of the rock, the rock of ages. And because of that, the man shall say, Praise the Lord. Number one, I have the word of promise. Number but you, I have the accepted sacrifice. Number three, the Lord our peace. Look at this in Judges chapter 6 and verse 24. Judges chapter 6, verse 24. It says, and Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abiezerites. That means that the Lord is with us and the Lord is our peace. Since the Lord is our peace, that the Lord should convince him. Look at this number four is divine defense divine defense look at uh, chapter 6 and verse 30 
In verse 30, it says, Then the men of the city said unto Joshua, That his father bring out thy son, that he may die, because he has cast down the altar of Baal, and because he has cut down the grove that was by it. Gideon knew that the people actually, once they said you were going to kill him, his father should have said, Now you see what you've done, you see what you brought upon yourself. The father should not have defended him because it was the father that had the idol, it was the father that was worshiping that idol. And then Gideon took that in the night and destroyed everything without even informing the father. And look at what happened in verse 31 and George said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Will ye say? him he that will plead for him let him be put to death while it is yet morning for if he be a god let him plead for himself because one has cast down his altar therefore on that day he called him Jeroboam, saying let Baal plead against him because he has thrown down his altar Look at that divine defense. It was the Lord defending Gideon himself. All that should have built up his faith. God gave him complete assurance that should develop his faith. And with all that we're hearing, God has given us assurance. I said, God has given us assurance. Number one, look at your own salvation. You repented of sin, then you were born again, and then you became a new creature in Christ. The things you were not able to do before, now you're able to do them. And you're able to stand with a strong backbone, defending the word of God. You stood in persecution, the Lord stayed with you. And then we are here when you are hearing the word of God. The Lord is saying, whatever question you are during the week, whatever kind of uh, the confusion you are during the week, as you come on Sunday when the choir is singing, or when our teachers are teaching Sunday scripture, all those questions you have in your mind, they are all answered. And when the word also comes, the passages you have not understood, everything is cleared up. What other thing do you need again? The Lord has shown that the Lord is with us. And then look at the revival going on as we are praying here God is uh, you know reaching us and healing us and delivering us is giving the barren giving them children what other what other a kind of uh, assurance do we need and then we still need somebody to die and go somewhere and come and tell us we don't need all that I said we don't need all that the word of God is very clear it makes everything plain to us and very clear to us and because of giving us this complete assurance we are going to follow it in Jesus name look at another thing in the life of this man in the life of Gideon. We're looking at chapter 6, verse 34. Chapter 6, we're looking at verse 34. In verse 34, the first part says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. That settles everything. When the Spirit of God comes upon us, it is the Spirit that will guide us into all truth. It's not the revelation or the vision of somebody that went somewhere that will guide us into all truth. It is the Spirit of God that comes upon our lives that will guide us into all truth. We're looking at John chapter 16. John chapter 16, and I'm reading here from verse 13. John chapter 16, we're looking at verse 13. It tells us in verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into how much of truth? All truth, he'll guide us into all truth. Truth about heaven and truth about salvation and truth about sanctification and truth about holy living. Truth about how to get to heaven. It is the spirit that will guide us into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. For he will show you things to come. And then the response of the people is very important. Look at this in Judges, now, Judges chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 35. Four. Look at Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. We're looking at verse 34. It says, But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered after him. Abiezer. Who was Abiezer? And what tribe is that? Which people are that? Look at verse 11. As you look at verse 11, it says, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat on the and go, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abiezerite. Those are the people of Joash, the father of Gideon. These were the people a few verses ago that said, We're going to kill this man. 
how could he throw down the altar of Baal? They wanted to kill him, and then God defended and God protected him when he blew the trumpet. Those were the first people to come out and to check to say, we are following to say that we submit ourselves to you. That alone should have convinced this man that this call is of God. The people persecuted before and the people that were opposed to him before, they were the people that now said, we're going to serve with you. We're going to fight this battle with you. That's what the Lord has done for us. I said, that's what the Lord has done for us. And you hear in the testimony, some people that say, I will never go to deeper life. If that is the only place you go to get to heaven, let me go where I want to go. I'll never get there. They fought and they persecuted. And then revival is going on now. They have been sick, no healing. And they have been, you know, deranged mentally and no deliverance. And then somebody said, they are having this in that place. And then they got there. As they got there, lo and behold, the first person to get healed was the person to get here. And then they come out. They are not even ashamed. They are not afraid. They said, I used to fight against this church before. Even when I saw the picture of that man, the picture was terrifying me. I want to go and ask him, what have I done to you? This one will fight it out. And instead of fighting now, they are submissive and converted. They are children of God and they are members of the church. You know, God is telling us that something is happening in our day. I said something happening in your day. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 14. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 60. We're looking at verse 14. Isaiah chapter 60. We're looking at verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. Are you still there? Something is coming your way. All your enemies, they'll bend before you in Jesus' name. And all that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. You see, that's what God did for Gideon. All that should have given him assurance, the response of the people, and the turning of the tribe on him. The whole tribe, not just his town people, all the tribe. Look at chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 35. Chapter 6, we're looking at it. verse 35. Judges chapter 6, verse 35. It says in verse 35, and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh. He didn't even go there himself. These people that had come to him from Abiezer, he said, now you will go to Manasseh, you'll go to Zebulon, you will go to Naphtali, and you will go and invite them. He didn't even go by himself. It says in that verse 35, and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. Him, and he sent messengers unto Asa and then unto Zebulon and unto Naphtali and they came up to meet him. They all came, they all came to meet him. Manasseh, who is Manasseh and what tribe is that of Manasseh? Let's look at verse 15. Verse 15 and he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh and I'm the least in my father's house. I'm from the tribe of Manasseh. And as you look at all the tribe of Manasseh, my family is the poorest, and then I'm the least in the poor family in Manasseh. And yet, when this man gave the call, everybody in Manasseh, they all rushed and they said, We are for you, we're going to support you. All that should give assurance to this man. And with all the things that the Lord has done, we have assurance already. I said, We have assurance already. We're going to win the war, we're going to win the battle. And the Lord is going before us. We will not turn back in Jesus' name. Now, a Christian's assessment discerning Gideon's fleet. That's point number three. A Christian's assessment discerning Gideon's fleet. Well, you've been read it already. Let's look at it together. We're looking at a chapter six. We're looking at chapter six of Judges. And I'm reading from verse 36. From verse 36. And Gideon said unto God, If thou... Even the you way he started that sentence already, you know, he's taking the wrong step out. He's putting the wrong foot out. You. If thou, if thou, Father, if praying, thou will save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, as thou hast said. I'm not sure you are telling me I the pray. truth. I'm not that sure you that you are faithful because I know what you have said. I hear what you have said. I understand what you have said. But if thou, if thou will do this as thou hast said, are you truthful? Will you fulfill your promise? 
Will you do what you said you will do? If thou, you know, when you see if thou, you'll see what the Lord responds to that. If thou, let's look at it. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. If thou, if thou, if thou. Anytime you see that, anytime you see anybody saying that to God, something is wrong. I pray you'll not doubt God. Everyone you will not question God. Today, if God says this is what he's going to do, you will not say, if sign, thou, if thou. In a Mark chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 22. Jesus Mark chapter name. 9, Mark chapter 9, we're looking at verse 22. In verse 22, in verse 22, and of times it has cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou, if thou, that's Gideon's language, and this is what this man said, using Gideon's language, if thou, Thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus returned this, if thou, back to him. Look at verse 29. And Jesus said unto him, if thou, if thou, if thou. You see, that's not God's language. And when this man used that language towards Jesus Christ, Jesus threw it back to him. Don't use that language for me. Is the God of all power. Is the Alpha and the Omega. You don't use if thou for is a faithful God. Is a covenant keeping God. You don't use if thou for him. Gideon was ignorant. You will not be ignorant. And so Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You'll be a believer in Jesus' name. That this shows, number one, Gideon's feebleness. Gideon's feebleness. But then, he number two is God's righteousness. faithfulness. God's nothing faithfulness. The There's Jesus. nothing God cannot now, do. And I want to assure you in your life, he will do everything. I said they will do everything. As you go to God in prayer today, don't never, never say to God, if thou, because we will never question the faithfulness of God. He will do everything in Jesus' name. Uh, come back, come back now to uh, Judges chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 37. Judges chapter 6, verse 37. Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know, then shall I know. If this happens, then shall I know. What the angel said to me is not enough, but let this happen, then shall I know. What God himself has said to me, I'm with you, that mighty man of valor, that's not enough for me, but if this happens, then shall I know. That's groundless faithlessness, groundless faithlessness. After God has said what he wanted to say, and he has affirmed that this is what he was going to do, this happens only then when I know that this is what we are going to do. And that's like Thomas. And all the other disciples, when Thomas came, they said, we have seen the Lord. He's risen from the dead. According to what he said, he said, I'm going to be delivered to the hands of the sinners. On the third day, I will rise again. When you are not around Thomas, the Lord came. He appeared unto us. Thomas said, unless I see the print of the nail in the sand that thrust my hand into his side, I will not not believe the eighth day they were gathered to him. Thomas was there and Jesus came in and without allowing Thomas to say anything, Thomas come in here, look at my hand and look at my side and then Thomas said, my Lord and my God, he said, well now because you see you are walking by side now you believe, blessed are those people that have not seen and yet they believe, the Lord is not going to be praising Gideon because it's like Thomas, when I see this then I shall know, I don't need to see anything again he saved me i feel that in my soul i know that in my heart and every promise he has made to me all these many years before deeper life started since deeper life started he has fulfilled every word we know that that god is a faithful god he's a truthful god and whatever he said he will do in jesus name and then i come to another point here this is a grievous fastidiousness fastidiousness is you know after you got this detail you got this detail you got this detail you're saying say, oh god now for the last time don't be angry don't be angry he knew that god should be angry with him he knew that that's why i said don't be angry with me just this last time now if the deal will fall on the sides and not on the deal then i will know that's Gideon's fastidiousness and eventually we even see even after all that you come to chapter 7 and we see Gideon's uh, fearfulness. He was still afraid. Look at chapter 7. 
in chapter 7 as you look at it from verse 9 in chapter 7 at this and judges and you're looking at it verse 9 and it says and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him arise and get thee down unto the host for I have delivered each into thy hands I've delivered each into thy hands verse 10 but if thou if thou, if thou, that's Peter's language, and God is throwing back into it, I know that now I said I've delivered each into your hand, but I know you are going to be afraid. If thou fear to go now, go thou with Pora, thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say. If what I've said is not enough to give you faith, thou shalt hear what they say. I pray that you'll not go that length. You'll say, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Can we say that together? God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Say that again. For the final time, it will set you into your life. Isaiah chapter 55, I'm looking at verse 11. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. The word of God will prosper your life. Every promise of God will prosper your life. Every good thing the Lord has told you, they'll be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And as you stand on those promises of God, you will not fall, you will not fail, you will not falter in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has given us his word, and that word will be fulfilled. Did he say he will save you and your family? He will save your family and save you. Did he say he will heal you? He will heal you. Did he say he will deliver you? He will deliver you. Did he say you will be a competent, effective, mighty instrument? instrument in his hand you'll be a competent effective mighty instrument in the hand of the lord he has promised he cannot fail he has promised you he cannot fail don't go back to the lifestyle and the question and the confusion of gideon the lord has given us complete assurance and his word will be yes and amen in every one of our lives open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer and connecting to all the whole world can you rise up be on your feet as we go to the Lord in prayer. If you are connected online, please. Praise the Lord. All right, so as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the service today. Thank you for your people. Thank you for our children, for our youths, and all our students on the campus, and the fathers and the mothers who are here today. With all our young people, to Lord, we pray. You bless every one of us together in this service today in Jesus' name. And we pray that as your voice reaches everyone, we'll answer yes in Jesus' name. We pray that as we answer and we do what you call us to do, we pray that the blessing will be upon the work in our hand and upon our personal lives and upon everything we do in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to see what you want us to see. And open our ears to hear your word as you want us to hear. And the answer will be positive and your blessings will multiply in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're talking about God's call in our lives today. God's call to everyone. He calls every one of us. Number one, he calls us to salvation. Number two, he calls us to separation. That is, he wants us to separate from our old life, past life, sinful life, and come unto him in righteousness and holiness. Number three, he calls us to his own service. He wants us to serve him. Every time he calls anyone to salvation and separation, what normally follows is that he wants us to come into the service of the Lord. Judges chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 12. Judges 6 verse 12, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, 
For and Lord, said unto him, it was a personal call. Let's pray, Lord. It was a pointed call. And it was a peculiar call. This was coming to Gideon. It was coming to him directly. When the Lord calls us, there's no mincing of the words. And there's no doubt about your delivering about it. He calls us specifically. And he calls us specially. And he calls us to a very definite service. He said that the Lord is with thee. Thou mighty man of valor. Thou mighty man of valor. God doesn't see us the way we are or the way we were. He sees us as the way we will be when he calls us. He's not looking at our present condition, present situation, present circumstances. He's not looking at even our fears and misgivings. He says, you're the man of valor. He says, you're a mighty man of valor. As you look at the practical side of the life of Gideon, you'll know that he was not feeling mighty. He was not feeling great. Man, he was not feeling unconquerable or invincible. He felt he couldn't do anything. That's why, as you read the story of Gideon, you'll Amen. find all the things he tried yes, to do to dodge the call of God. And if God says, you are mighty, you are mighty in Jesus' name. That's why the word of God says, let the weak say, I am strong. And that strength of the Lord will be upon every life. He says, the Lord is with me, the mighty man of valor. Look at that verse again, if the Lord is with you, he is mighty, he is strong, he is unconquerable, and if he is with you with all his strength, and he's going to support you underneath at the everlasting arms, that makes you mighty. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, it says, and the Lord looked upon him. The Lord looked upon him. You see, when the Lord forgives us, all our sins are forgiven and forgotten. And he looks at us now, and he's not seeing us as wretched sinners, as doubting sinners, Sinners and miserable sinners, he God, looked upon him, and what did he say? He said, Go in this thy might, go in this thy might. That takes faith on our side. You know who you were, you know what you were. You were a sinner, you were weak. You always yielded to temptation, Jesus, and now you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God, and then you're still looking at yourself the way you were. I'm not strong, I'm weak, and even some people even continue to say, I am a sinner, saved by grace. No, you are not the saint of God. He calls you saint, he calls you mighty, he calls you his child. In that verse 14, go in this thy mind, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midian. Have I not delayed, sent thee the same thing that God told Joshua? Have I not commanded you? Have I not sent you the same thing he was telling this man, Gideon? And I pray that when the word of God comes to us, we'll think of ourselves the way God is thinking about us. We'll say of ourselves what the Lord is saying about us in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. If you had seen Gideon where he was before this time, he was trying to thresh some wheat. But he did that in a secluded place. Instead of going to the mountain top to do that so that the wind would blow the chaff away, he hid himself from the Midianites. And see this man hiding away from the Midianites. The Lord now said, you are the one. You are fearful of the Midianites. You are afraid of the Midianites. And you are kind of checking away. You are, you are keeping a great distance between you and the Midianites. I'm going to, to get you near he them and you're abroad. going to destroy to them as the one single man. man. Look at verse 22. Abroad. In verse 22, and Please when Gideon perceived oh that he was an angel it of the Lord, the Gideon said, Alas, O oh Lord God, for because God. I have God seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. I will not die. What the Lord has committed into Gideon's hand, he will do before death came. And what the Lord has committed into your hand, you will do before death comes in Jesus' name. He saw the angel. And when he saw the angel, his own interpretation of seeing the angel is that I'm going to die. I've seen an angel. I've seen the heavenly representative of the Lord himself. You see, there are some people, the tradition that people have, the ideas that people have, have in the old life. You know, when you see God, you die. When you see the angel of God, you die. 
He was still having that. That's why when new converts are made, many of the new converts, they still have the old tradition, the old principles, and the old superstition, and the old things they thought about their lives. But now, when they come, that's why we teach them. That's why Jesus said, you're going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then when they become converts, you want to disciple them. You want them to know that all the old ideologies and the old tradition, the old superstition they had, all that was wrong. And you keep them assurance because you're a new creature now. You have new knowledge and new understanding and new approach and new outlook to life. Verse 23 says, and the Lord said, unto a peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then, verse 24, and then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom is one of the seven covenant names of the Lord in the Old Testament. This is Jehovah the Lord, our peace. The Lord, our peace. They are the peace of God. What does the Bible say? Being justified by faith, we are peace with God. Once you come to the Lord in repentance, and then your sins are forgiven, you are saved, you are born again, you are a child of God. Now you have the peace of God being justified by faith. And then it becomes the Lord, your peace, Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day, it is yet in Ophrah of the Abiezerites. And so you will find the call of God upon Gideon. It was a divine call to service, a divine call to leadership, and a divine call to national deliverance. It was to deliver the whole nation from the Midianites. It was a divine call to defeat the oppressive nation that he is the Midianites, troubling them, oppressing them, and it was a divine call to national transformation and triumph. It was a difficult time for Israel. And look at Judges chapter 6 and look at the condition and the situation of the Israelites at that time. When the Lord calls us, it might not be the easiest of times. You know, when times go well and when things go easy, then I respond to the call of God. Not at all. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 1. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Midianites. How many years? Seven years. As we look at the children of Israel at this time, there's what we call a cycle. And then for them, it was a vicious cycle, a negative cycle. It was a terrible cycle on them. Number one, there was sin. Number two, there was supplication. Number three, there was salvation. And then again, there was uh, you know, going back into their evil ways, into their sin. As you come to chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, and then you go to chapter 9, you go on to the rest of the judges, you find that cycle repeating again. One sin. They committed sin before the Lord. Because of that sin, the Lord made punishment upon them, so you have suffering. And because of that suffering, they cry unto the Lord, then you have supplication. Then because of that uh, supplication, you have salvation, redemption, so the Lord redeemed them again. And then they will start to love again, sin and suffering and supplication, and then salvation. After that salvation, after a few years again, they go back again into sin, and then suffering will come, and then supplication and salvation again, a vicious cycle in their lives. I hope that is not in your own life, that you are learning by the stick, you are learning by the rod, you are not learning by the word, that once the word of the Lord has come to you, he has delivered you, he has saved you, he has redeemed you from the hand of the enemy. You don't begin that cycle in your life again and go back to where you came from. I pray that God will keep us steady and stable, solid all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. In verse 2, we're told the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them in the days which are in the in mountains and caves pray. and strongholds. And so it was in verse 3. When Israel had sown, and the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, and even they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustainers for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass, for they came up with their cattle and their tents and became as grasshoppers for multitude. They covered the whole land. And if you know what grasshoppers do, they eat up all the green things, all the vegetables.
troubles and everything he can just get to. And he came like this, up past the multitude, for both they and their camels were without number. And they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. It was their cry to the Lord that brought Gideon into the open. Because God now came to him and said, I have an assignment for you. The nation had sunk into deep idolatry and deep suffering. His call could only be fulfilled by faith. The same thing the Lord is calling us today. And when the call of God comes to us, we understand we're going to respond by faith. To say yes to the Lord when the answer comes, we can only fulfill that yes and that response to the call of God just by faith. That's why we're looking at fulfilling God's call by faith in his sufficiency. Faith in his sufficiency. Not faith in your own humanness. Not faith in your own wisdom. Not faith in your own power. Not faith in your own natural abilities. Not faith in your own human mind. It is faith in God's sufficiency. And this is what God required and requested from Gideon. The Lord said, I'm with you. That mighty man of valor. I make you mighty. The presence of the Lord in our lives makes us mighty. Fulfilling God's call by faith faith in his sufficiency you will fulfill God's call Amen. no matter how weak you think you Amen. are no matter how ignorant you think Jesus. you are all the, the other people he called out. before you and Amen. the people is going to call after you were just the same when God called Moses, Moses said me Amen. can I do it? call another man and when God called Welcome other people the same thing he felt even though you feel Jesus, weak the strength the of the Lord will make you mighty in Jesus and it will do name, your fulfilling for you God's call by faith in God, his sufficiency, that will not the way you consider. came Number in one, Jesus' name. A clear assignment we thank God for bringing you. We thank God because the Holy Spirit himself is here with us. The Heavenly Father is here. Us, he gives and we are grateful to God for convening us also this here. This is the way to go. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. That is the way to go. A clear Praise assignment the demanding great faithfulness. We also Number have in our midst this evening, we want to take this opportunity to welcome a very very special guest. Assurance, developing, growing faith. We have when here God gives us assurance. He gives very, us this very item to give us guest. assurance. Your faith will grow a little bit more. Another this assurance state. of faith ought to grow a little bit more. Another of assurance state. of faith ought to grow a little bit more. That's Prince what God wanted. Kolawale, Gideon to realize. Gade Number Gade three, a Christian's assessment concerning discerning Gideon's fleas. That is a Christian's assessment. You see, we'll when we read the later Old on, Testament, we, are we need to also assess them. To God we need to evaluate them. We need to examine them. We need to test the them. You is test not them just by here, the word of the Lord to the of New Testament Testament believers. We welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And see what Moses did. It's my privilege but because to Moses was a great the man, man, I would normally to justify everything he did. As the number one Christian in our state. And then he spun the rock two times. What has still came out? A million of people. People the Christian water, Association of Nigeria. Christian will assess that. I'm sure you the know Christian that this program will examine that. Is that was the right thing to do? Here is by Joshua, Khan. a great man. And so we have in the team. house this and then evening. The Kibernets came and they said we're coming Reverend from a far country. John, and look at our clothes. Our clothes already Dr. are worn John out Adelike because of our long journey. Wife. And Joshua did not ask from the Lord. Are us. these people telling the truth or not? He made a legal thing. He made an agreement with them. Three days after, he then discovered that these people came from from Oshun nearby, Baptist what a great mistake welcome, he sir. made. A Christian will assess that. A Christian will think we about that. Here is something one of Lord the judges in Baba Israel in the book of the That's judges. Reverend and you Jacob know, began Asani. to love a woman Reverend Asani among was the, the former Philistines. PFN and then the parents challenged him. No, this is me. Well, that's one I'm Jesus going to name. marry. Him. And eventually, he made that man to tell all that he knew about himself. And the Philistines came upon him and removed his two eyes. We examined. We say these that the men of the, of the Bible will be with is every one of you the way we in the name ought of Jesus. to go. And so that's please, the reason why you look at Gideon, put a fleece there, and put this there, and they said this and that. And we don't just take that us. and say, that's a great you. man of much. God. There's God a Christian's assessment very much. discerning all Gideon's fleece. I come to point number one. You're welcome that is in the name a of clear Jesus. assignment demanding great faithfulness. Evening. Let's I see the assignment the Lord has given when we came at Titus chapter 6 again of, uh, of Joshua.
Judges chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14, clear assignment. And the name of Jesus upon him and said, Go, in this thy might, but thou shalt save Israel from the Midianites. Clear assignment, you are to save the nation, the people of Israel from the Midianites. That's number one assignment. Our assignment the Lord has given to us is the assignment the Lord gave to Jesus Christ. And what he gave to Jesus Christ, Christ has given to us. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Let
But all still the same. We the reason why we initiate this prayer meeting, GCK prayer meeting, is to intercede, is to pray for our GS, is to pray for the success of the program. That is why we initiated this uh, prayer meeting, knowing that it's going to be a time of uh, stress for some of us. I pray that our sacrifice, our commitments, the kingdom of God will be accepted in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are the God of all flesh. You are the God of yesterday. You are the God of forever today and the God forevermore. We appreciate you for your manifestation of your love, for your power, for your glory, for your presence, and for all what you have been doing since we commenced GCK. We thank you for the life of our Father in the Lord, Pastor, Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. We bless your name for the manifestation of miracle power of God working in his life, working in his ministry. We come before you tonight as we intercede, as we pray for the progress of GCK. We pray tonight may our prayer be acceptable in the sight of the Lord in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's let's open our mouth. Let's bless the Lord. Let's thank Him for all what the Lord has been doing since we commenced GCK. Let's thank Him for the great miracle, for the great manifestation of His power, of His love, of His goodness, of His authority upon our GS upon all the officiating minister all through the globe. Let's appreciate him and let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank you so much for what God is doing, for what God is still doing. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor. Let's give him the adoration. Our God is good to be praised. Our God is good to be worshiped. Our God is good to be highly exalted. Mm -hmm. There is no one we can compare with him. He is this. He is the King of kings, the Lord of glory. We appreciate you, God. We bless you, God. We thank you for the manifestation of your power. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the souls that have been saved. We thank you for the souls that have been delivered. We worship you. We bless you. We glorify you. Father, received all the praises. Father, received all the honor. Let your name be magnified. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be highly exalted. King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ancients of this, the God of glory. We worship you, O God. Thank you for your presence. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for everything you have been accomplishing in our life, in our family, in GCK. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's now thank the Lord for the souls that are saved, for the souls that came into the kingdom of God tonight. Let's bless the Lord, Jesus, the miracle worker. He saves souls tonight. Let's appreciate him. Let's thank him for his mighty power save. For his power that delivered. For his power that brought souls into the kingdom of God. Our God and our Father. We want to thank you for the souls that have been saved. Our God and our Father. We come to worship you for the souls that have been delivered. We thank you for the salvation of souls tonight. We appreciate your name for the people that have surrendered their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify your name. 
for the power of deliverance. We glorify your name. Jesus, the miracle worker, how you have performed miracle of salvation, miracle of restoration, miracle of dominion, miracle of healing, upon the participants, upon everyone that be associated with this city tonight. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we thank you for your saving power, your saving grace. Jesus mighty to say, Jesus that is able to deliver, we thank you for delivering souls tonight. We bless you for the salvation of souls. Open your mouth and show appreciation to God for the salvation of the people that respond to salvation, for the deliverance of the people that respond to deliverance. Thank you, Father, for salvation. Thank you, Father, for the manifestation. Thank you, Father, for great mani- for great blessing. You have blessed us through this Jesus. Mouth and so appreciation to King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the ancients of days, the light of the world, the one that has been in the world before the world began, who is like unto our God. There is no one we can compare with him. We bless your name for salvation. We bless your name for restoration. We bless your name for deliverance. We bless your name for, for, for the manifestation of your presence, O oh God, during this GCK. We appreciate you. Thank you, Father, for your healing power. Thank you, Father, for your, your great, great salvation. salvation. Thank you, Father, for your great deliverance. We bless you, God. We Alleluia. worship you, God. We adore you, God. Alleluia. Glory be to your name. Honor be Alleluia. to your name. We receive all the praise. We receive all the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. We are going to commit the covenant of the GCK into the hands of the Lord. Pastor, Doctor, W.F. Kumuyi. We are going to pray for him. God will strengthen him. His strength will not fail him. God will empower him. Out of six days, today is day one. Five more days to go. Let's lift him up. The remaining five days, let's stretch from above come upon him. The remaining five days, the Lord will see him through. Let's pray for the covenant of the GCK that the presence of God will be upon his life. The power of God will rest upon his life. Let's ask God to strengthen the covenant of GCK. Oh God, strengthen the covenant of GCK. We pray you will strengthen him, oh God. Sicknesses, we pray you remove every sickness away. We pray by your power. We pray by your spirit, oh God. I am asking you, Father. I am praying, Father, by your power, by your grace, oh God, in the name of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus, strengthen our Father in the Lord. Uphold our Father in the Lord. Let your strength descend upon his life. You see with your strength, you see with your power, the glory, the presence, the power of God who walk mightily upon the life of our pastor, upon the life of our mentor. Oh God, use our Father in the Lord. His strength will not fail him at this time around. His body will not disappoint him at this time around. The power will come upon his life. You will use him in a mighty way. Let's pray for strength upon our Father in the Lord. And God will strengthen our Pastor Jesus. The power of God will work upon his life. Let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Lord. That the power Amen. of God will walk upon our GS in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray and talk Amen. to God. With God, all things are Amen. possible. There is nothing that the Lord cannot do. He will do it, O God. In Jesus' name Amen. we pray. Amen. Let's pray. For all the souls that have responded to salvation tonight, let's ask the Lord to establish those souls. Let's commit those souls into the hands of the Lord. 
that God will establish them. All the souls that have responded to salvation at Oshobo and all over, all over the location, all over the globe, where GCK was hold. Let's pray, God, we establish the newcomers. God, we establish them in the name of Jesus. The souls that have been worked at Oshobo, at Oshobo, let's act at Oshobo, at Oshobo, let's ask the power of God to sustain the soul. The Lord will establish the soul in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Holy Father, I pray, I ask you, God, that souls, those souls that have come into the kingdom, let them be sustained. You will see they shall continue in the apostles' doctrine. I will say, and all that I will not call, and they continue in the apostles' doctrine. We are asking, we are praying, oh God, that the kingdom will continue. In the name of Jesus, I am Maxi, Father. I am praying, Father. The power of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, you walk right now, you move right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We are going, we are going to pray once again that from tomorrow, multitude will surrender their life to Jesus. From tomorrow, Let's ask God for conversion. Let's ask God as many that are escaped the salvation tonight, tomorrow will not pass them by. The Lord will reach out to them. The Lord will save them. Let's pray for the, convers for the conversion of souls of men. The conversion of souls of men in, in, in Oshobo at the Crusade GCK. Let's ask the Lord that the power of God will arrest them. Salvation in their life. Salvation in their life. In the name of Jesus, deliverance in their lives. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God, the power of God, will work mighty. In the name of Jesus, let's pray and call upon the Lord. From tomorrow, we want to experience new things. From tomorrow, from tomorrow, we want to experience the power of God upon the life of everyone. From tomorrow, in the name of Jesus, there will be salvation tomorrow. There will be deliverance tomorrow. There will be liberation tomorrow. Let's ask the Lord that the Lord will descend, present his power, his authority upon our life from tomorrow. Let there be salvation. Let there be deliverance. Let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. Holy Father, I am Max, I am free of God. That the manifestation of your power will work by the Lord. There shall be salvation. There shall be deliverance. Hallelujah. There shall be deliverance. Hallelujah. There shall be salvation. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray and call upon the Lord. Pray and call upon the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's, let's pray once again that tomorrow miracle will be greater than today miracle. That tomorrow miracle will be greater than today miracle. Let's ask the Lord to bless every participant that we attend this global crusade from starting from today and tomorrow and all throughout this week and next week on Tuesday. Let's pray that God will touch the heart of the sons of men. God will touch the heart of people. In the name of Jesus, call upon the Lord and let's pray. Oh God, show forth your power. In the name of Jesus, for the oppression, in the name of Jesus, let's pray and ask the Lord. There must be conversion. There must be conversion. There must be conversion. That is the essence of the retreat. That is the important of the retreat. If there is no conversion, all what we are doing is rubbish. Oh Lord, we are asking for conversion. Conversion. Holy Ghost conversion. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going Amen. to pray Amen. once again that this GCK will add more souls to the kingdom of God. If I be lifted up from the earth, the Bible says, I will draw all men unto myself. We are going to pray that this GCK, oh God, let souls be added into the kingdom. Let souls be added through 
from tomorrow we want to we want, we want, we want to experience more more souls more salvation more people that will surrender their life to the lord let's pray for addition of souls to be saved tomorrow addition of souls to be healed tomorrow addition of souls to be liberated tomorrow addition 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 the power of the lord will manifest tomorrow the light of god will manifest tomorrow that the spirit of christ will move in a mighty and powerful way tomorrow that the lord god almighty will work salvation we work deliverance we work liberation the bible say acts of me and i will give thee the and the utmost part of the earth for their possession began to ask for the source of the source of men began to pray for the source of the source of men ask <laughs> For the source of men, Hallelujah. let God manifest Hallelujah. His power. Let the have your deliverance at Oshoko tomorrow in Oshu State. As this TCK we continue throughout this week, there will be miracle Gano. That, that all our officiating minister, moderator, our singers, our GS, more grace, more strength upon their life. They will be used by God. And through them, multitude will come to the kingdom of God. Through them, multitude will come to the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus.